good evening, my dear and lovely people. Today, I'm your host, Ritvika Sharma, back again with another talk show. But, 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 this bar is something new because it is not just an amazing show, but it is going to be the most fantabulous show on this page because today, a guest of honor is very on and core person of this page. So without any further delay, we should welcome a lovely and cheerful soul, Miss Neelam Saxena Chandra, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Hello, Ritwika. How are you? I am doing great with full energy. I'm up here to talk to you live. You tell, how's the energy on the other side? Joshe. <laughs> Hi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, ma'am. And we can see our audience is much interested to be interactive. So, already my dear audience knows our beautiful soul, but still, I would be more than pleasure, you know, pleasure to tell you about our author today, our very honor today. And here we go. So, Neelam Saxena Chandra is an engineering graduate from VNIT. And she has done her post-graduation diploma in IM HRD and also in finance. She has completed a course in finance from London School of Economics. She has authored five novels, one novella, seven short story collections, 35 poetry collections, and 14 children books. And our uh, dear author is the bilingual writer. She writes in Hindi and English. And if I start with the, you know, list of uh, awards, that would be endless. But the most remarkable one are her Limca Book of Records from 2015. Her uh, best of, I would say, best of accomplishment is her names coming under 78 most popular authors of the country under Forbes magazine. Like, congratulations, ma'am. The list is endless. Thank you. The list is endless with Rabindranath Tagore Award and many other Poetry Council of India awards and uh, awards she has received as honor from American Embassy National Poetry Contest. So congratulations, ma'am. I Thank am you. the most happiest person today because our very own and very beautiful soul is here and I can't wait to you know, start with our conversation about her novel, Karmic Threads. So, ma'am, can you please show our viewers the book cover? Yeah, sure. This Great. is the book cover of my novel, The Karmic Threads. That's beautiful, ma'am. Just like uh, Eiffel Tower. Great. <laughs> we will disclose <laughs> things sooner. Thank you so much, sure. ma'am. So firstly, welcome again, ma'am. And I would like uh, the show to begin with a beautiful poetry of yours because we all know, we have seen you more than, you know, just a novel world. We have listened to you. We have been, you know, being a complete fan of your poetry, the way you recite, your recitation and your, uh, you know, modulation of voice. That uh, impresses me from day one. And it's been two years. <laughs> Finally, I can hear you live virtually. So let's go ahead with your poetry, ma'am. Okay. The poem that I shall be rendering is titled Gold. Okay. And I'm we wearing a golden veil, you know. <laughs> that's, that's so while you were walking on those forsaken yet smiling paths, <laughs> ever watch those lofty green mountains and the golden sun shining over it? Have you ever longingly looked at it, desiring to hold the majestic sun in your trembling little hands? That bright sun has haunted me quite often. Yes, I have even walked on the paths leading to those haughty mountains in my dreams, always fading in my endeavors. 
I've fallen prey to the wild animals. The thorns on the way have pricked me so piercingly that I've wriggled in pain. I've slipped due to the sudden slopes and I've always returned hopeless and miserable. But today was a golden day too. Despite the intense heat, I decided firmly that I have to climb up and what me. I could see through the thorns. The wild animals didn't deter me. And the terrain was made, meant to be conquered on that amazing day. When I reached the zenith, I pulled up the golden sun from the sky. And when I held it with my trembling hands, I could feel the golden glow transferring from the sun into my delicate heart. Life often simply challenges you. And once you accept the dare, alchemy often takes place. Needless to say, you are the brightest. So that was my poem, Gold. You know, ma'am, what I like the most about your poetry, you have different emotions woven in it. And the way you recite that crisp voice of yours, uh, you know, elegancy of your uh, voice in between. That modulations, that particular stop poses and the way you, you know, present yourself, the body language, the voice, that crispness and elegance, all a mixture of different emotions. That really intrigues me. For you being a poetess, you being a writer, I guess that's the most important and crucial thing which I noticed in the first impression and also that makes my heart, you know, golden in the real sense. <laughs> because uh, uh, the way poets recite themselves, express themselves, that can be more about them. So you can see my smile. It is just golden. <laughs> yes, I'm yes, listening yes. to the words of yours. So thank you so much, Pam, because your words, that Chris, clear voice that really you know conveys more about you so thank you yeah i would like to jump with uh some question air rounds for you first being the first how you decided the track name the novel name the thriller name to be karmic threats uh can you repeat the question so my uh, my question is how you decided upon the title karmic thread for your novel i i always you know uh, finalize the title after i finish the novel okay uh, so it uh, wasn't uh, decided in the beginning but it was decided after i had completed it and in fact i had got it edited and everything then I kept wondering, my process is always to write down 8 to 10 uh, probable okay. titles. And then I strike them off, some of them off. So uh, the process went on and on. I think uh, finally I had shortlisted two of them. One was Dauntless, A okay. Journey of a Million Miles. And uh, the second was karmic threads. So somehow I like this karmic threads more because it's ap uh, <laughs> aptly fair, you know, perfectly yeah, choose yeah. name. So, yeah, yeah, ma'am. And the name is chosen already. We know the novel is karmic threads. People, not again. It is karmic threads. We are going to talk about today, and. With the same thing, I would like to pop up the real questions, which are, so what was the initial thought of yours before you started writing or pondering upon the thought that I need to write a novel which would be covering this topic? Like, as you said that you firstly write 10 first 10 chapters to decide on how the story is going. So please tell about the first phase of your uh, novel writing process of this particular story. See, this story, uh, this novel had a unique uh, story, behind the scenes story. So I was traveling to Paris in 2008. Okay. And there were two incidents uh, that stuck in my mind. 
one was uh, while i was visiting eiffel tower and standing in the queue uh, to climb up to ascend the tower uh, i saw a few indian ladies selling wares such as uh, um, mementos keychains etc so i was about to say uh, these um, dash dash indians uh, what are they doing here kind of thing but then i realized that uh, realized means i was told that yeah. these are ladies who are destitute who have been left behind by their uh, uh, so called spouses who marry them for dowry and leave them there without anything without um, uh, money without passport and uh, also they have no support from their parents because okay. in india in a few families of course it is going away thankfully thankfully now but the view that once a daughter gets married uh, their duty is over uh, as if the daughter is a burden that still exists so these were those women so their faces you know they kept lingering on and on in my memories the second was uh, like um, when i decided to write the novel the thought of a metro station suddenly struck me such sort of metro stations can be found anywhere in the world but what struck me was uh, a station whose name was shetley so there you know there are multiple layers i think it had five or six layers uh, like stories which we call in english uh, in india which we call in india six stories so my husband also went uh, he asked me to sit somewhere while we were going somewhere and he said ki just wait for a few minutes and i'll come back so those 10 minutes when he was not there and i was wondering where i am and i had nothing with me and like i felt if the heroine of this novel gets caught up in a similar situation hmm. and the person ditches her of course in my case uh, <laughs> that was yeah. uh, uh, very long after marriage and uh, means things were very different i had chosen my partner but okay. uh, what if it happens to somebody uh, who just doesn't know anything and doesn't have anything uh, any money anything with her so these two thoughts were there in my mind while i started writing the novel and i write the synopsis first so you know that makes my focus quite straight so i think before starting writing uh, practically physically uh, a lot how the novel is going to take uh, shape like right now i'm writing another novel so i've already decided how it is going to build up and then what its climax would be so That's a very uh, exercise, <laughs> so things moved around it and the characters were formed accordingly and how uh, the girl lands up in paris uh, there had to be a very strong story so um, i build up those characters in india accordingly and uh, then of course uh, she had to come up you know my novels have to end on an optimistic note so rest part is her journey ma'am as you stated that uh, you have been to paris and you noticed some indian women over there and this part has been highlighted in your novel as well so uh, what i what was my first expression after reading the novel entire novel was it is something realistic this case is very serious which is happening around us in our own very own country and then it was not just a novel for me but it was something which had a real uh, you know strong core purpose or say motto some issue behind to be addressed so uh, in the complete process of my reading i never felt that uh, i am in a fairy tale world 
where everything is all good in things so that is much evident how you express that you started writing this novel because of such incidents which you have been noticing around you while you were uh, there to travel in paris so that's great and uh, the way you express that you would left uh, in the metro station for some moment so the way you have elegantly uh, presented the feelings of our main character that is monica how she felt while waiting on the metro station those emotion was so so much pure and raw so i could just connect uh, while you were telling about your own experience how you started i just went back to the entire scene where these things were happening in the novel and with that we have uh, our lovely audience with us say uh, pushpa ma'am says congratulations to you ma'am aparna ma'am says Congratulations, dear Neelam. And here Thank is you a, so much. <laughs> and here is a picture of Nivedita, ma'am. And she's saying hello, Neelam. Hello, Ruchi. Hello, ma'am. And it's she, so nice to see a literary warrior family with us. You know, uh, there may be so many viewers, but it always feels special when our family is there. The literary warrior yeah. group is the family. Yeah, and also uh, Nivedita Ma'am says positive vibes is equal to Neelam. <laughs> so thank you, dear Nivi. Thank you, and thank Prasanna you. is also here. He's a very wonderful friend okay. and a poet, of course. He is a wonderful, wonderful poet. We need to read the work sooner. And coming back to our talk show. So, ma'am, uh, what I have noticed while I was reading your writing style, it is completely unique to you, and I understood why Neelam Saxena is Neelam Saxena, why her work is so unique and profound. Because while I was uh, reading the entire novel, it went very smoothly. What I have noticed in the authors of this uh, generation, they start with the story. they add up many things they want to chop the main character but somewhere or other they are not able to provide the uh, you know smooth end to the story they have starting clear in their head and just the way you told us that uh, you decide the synopsis of the book and how the story is going to unfold but what i have been noticing is that uh, ki they have initial thoughts then they are like we will build up something and so we the loose touch of their own self what they wanted to build as their craft and they feel lost and what they call as writer's block completely blocked them. so what would be your advice to our young authors to pen up their story this way you know when i wrote my first novel like i am not a literature student so it was difficult for me also it was way back in 2011 i suppose that i was writing my first novel okay. that's titled soul seekers so you know i did a lot of research and i spent 6 months on uh, reading how to write a novel so uh, like uh, each chapter how many words it should have and should we have more of dialogues or should it be more of description because i had read novels of different kinds i have re- been a voracious reader and i have read a lot but uh, like i was just wondering what is better because i had my own impressions because uh, there was there's a very famous novelist who gives too much of description and uh, i didn't like that Hmm. Um, but there were other uh, novels in which the things move so fast so fast so fast that uh, it doesn't look like a novel at all so okay. uh, that has to be a balance so i studied a lot about it in fact i got enrolled in one of the courses in creative writing though i never gave its exam or anything but i got its material and read it just to understand how others uh, do it of course after the first novel everything is forgotten and now you know you should know the rules to be able to break it i often say the statement so i read the rules 
and then I broke it. <laughs> but, That's interesting. <laughs> but uh, what I learned was ki, uh, your thoughts have to be clear, you have to be focused. And you know, my job gives me that focus. Because uh, in my job, there are so many people, so many things happening uh, at the same time. So I have to focus on different things. So uh, uh, that focus was there. And uh, this, you know, I decided like a lot of authors go different ways. Some people start with a story and then let it take its own course. Uh, and some people uh, do it differently. But I always prefer writing a synopsis and then going ahead with the novel so that I don't lose the focus. That is my line. That synopsis is my line. And things have to revolve around that. So that makes things uh, slightly easier for the readers to read. Because like said, they know. Hmm, yeah. Like because you said, they, the railway track and your train has to revolve around the same thing. <laughs> the major track <laughs> it should not derail itself yeah, yeah it should not buckle yeah because um i'm picking up on your words like uh the focus is the main key i have noticed in the novel there are several characters the main story is of course there but different lives are going around so uh how you manage uh you know keeping uh the preciseness the uniqueness of their own stories, like a uh, side character of Resham, Rupam, how you manage to put them, you know, in their their own unique yet beautiful way of their own story and how it twists and turns to come back to the main persons, the main characters lead of the story. So I want to know that elegancy of yours. See, I'm a mathematics student. So, you know, I draw many rays. Okay. So, and the rays, uh, they diverge in the beginning and then they have to converge. Okay. That's the theory. So, there were certain uh, questions uh, which were puzzles. Uh, so, those puzzles had to be solved towards the end. So, that is how my thinking process was. So, I let certain things remain and then, uh, you know, uh just to keep the interest of uh, readers alive uh like um, uh, you know um, if you just meet one person in your entire life you won't enjoy it if you meet two you'd be happier but if you meet five six close people you know uh, the thoughts of different persons around and um, Sometimes we feel that we are alone uh, in our journey and there's nobody with us. But often there are people. In this novel also, if you, uh, if you know, you have already read it. Uh, for the viewers, I'm saying this. If the viewers read it, they'll find that they, uh, though the protagonist felt that she was alone, there were people who were sympathizing with her. So uh, sympathizing or understanding or whatever. So, you know, sometimes even that helps a lot if you come to know about it. So, yeah. so that's why I've brought different perspectives. I really, uh, you know, appreciate you for bringing in the side stories because it's just not the uh, novel and the, you know, specific story. Just as you express your views, uh, we got different people. Like we got to know Rupam's perspective. And later on, uh, when we meet the same character, the maturity level is shown in the novel with your words, with the expression. So it also gives uh, uh, us, you know, one thing like uh, the uh, be on behind the scene, I was just saying that there is no one in the house, There should be patience. Uh, patience. Like each and every person find their person. It's just all about our karma and patience. And with uh, when all of our readers would just take up the book, take up the novel, and they would read, they would realize that uh, in the end, the name of the novel is justified. Don't just give up uh, on hope because in the end, you will find your true justice. 
and with the same ma'am the character the story around chacha chachi how you came up with not just one element but several stories were included behind the scenes it was just not uh, giving a little disclaimer to our audience if it's that okay yeah yeah like they were not just uh, taking care of a main lead monica but planning such a vast uh, you know future planning was happening behind the scene so how you curated the entire scene of chacha chachi and the end which were, uh, which would be very surprising for all of our uh, you know readers out there so please uh, spot uh, spotlight on the scene chacha chachi's character while chachi was emotionally attached to monica towards the end uh she wasn't initially that attached if you see in the novel but you know uh, you grow to like certain people and because the person is basically very nice so that is what happened with chachi so uh, as i said different perspectives so this was the perspective of chachi and uh, as you said there are a lot of side stories but all these side stories are somehow connected to the main protagonist and yeah. these have been developed only to show the strength or the weakness or the fragility or the naivety of the protagonist so uh, they are all related in a way like uh, they are not just uh, stories they are connected to the story of the main protagonist so uh, like uh, you know how my thought process worked like uh, this girl had to be left alone in paris true uh, that was the main thing so okay. now um, i either i had to show that her parents didn't love her at all or i had to show certain circumstances in which uh, she has nobody hmm. so these chacha chachi came into picture so they've been shown as cruel and since monica uh, initially they've been shown as uh, shrewd but monica being naive and young uh, doesn't realize it and the way they show themselves so she got gets caught in that trap so in that time trying to tell people beware beware of everybody around after all it is your life and you have to deal with it because when she was in difficulties there was nobody else to help it was her own inner strength that got her out of that problem of course there were friends who held her uh, in certain manner but the ultimate strength came from her own character and she had to discover that so through that i wanted everybody to understand indirectly that howsoever fearful you may be or whatever may be your misgivings thoughts uh you can certainly find your way out uh, the world never ends it keeps going moving and uh, it's just a matter of time that uh, you'll shine brighter than what you were and that's why i started our show with the with the poem gold when you asked me to yeah. render a poem <laughs> that's beautiful ma'am entire uh you know uh the way i can just connect with golden lights you know golden golden word it's just connecting me towards eiffel tower and you talked about the inner shine in the night sky when uh the lights are on in the eiffel tower what we could you know express is that inner light somewhere or other that a city of a romance can abandon a person just like you met some uh, indian women over there who were uh, you know uh, just selling little stuff which doesn't get in notice to you know survive in such a huge and well re- uh, well renowned city so maybe that eiffel tower would be providing those you know strength just like our main character was abandoned in between and she was there to survive to be on her own maturity level and actually take some time and realize i am a person i have to start over 
I have to be there for myself. So these words of your, uh, actually, I think uh, when a writer is writing the book, some things align naturally, like the city you chose, the uh, characteristic, you know, uh, the emotions you wanted to depict, that inner strength, courage of a person, those make complete sense to me after talking to you on one-to-one -one basis because there was many things like uh, the background also, you know, comes together and then it provides a great ray of hope to a story you know like i could have chosen any other city because people are abandoned in different cities and i've traveled to many countries in europe uh, mm. so i could have chosen any other city yeah. but you know why i chose paris is also important because uh, like you said that shine of eiffel tower and i've also shown in that the two colors Actually, all these were seen by me uh, uh, on the first day when we went to Paris and to the Eiffel Tower, the lights were yellow. And uh, during festivities, they were mm -hmm. blue. Yeah. So uh, that scene I wanted to create, that happiness was golden. And then suddenly it turned blue and dull and uh, she felt the sparkle has left her but then she could find that same twinkle in her once again so this i could not have right. depicted in any other city that i had seen maybe there are other cities but um, this is where i found my heroine to be that's you know behind the scenes of novel are just these words of us which we are you know exchanging today like when a writer what i feel is when a writer is writing a novel it's not just a story everything a person reads just like we read about the paris city itself it is you know remarkable enough how a writer is trying to you know bring out each and every emotion to the optimal level the readers could just feel just by reading they could imagine and while i was reading your entire novel I could feel that shyness, that elegance. I was just, you know, to be really uh, telling in a straightforward manner, to be very precise, I was just wondering as if some 90s movie that was playing and I could imagine with each and every next word, I could imagine that emotion, that shyness is coming, the laugh is increasing, that a little naughtiness is there or something whatever the uh, you know story was trying to uh, you know just uh, convey i could imagine it in every possible way and uh, many writers write the novel but elegancy and decency and say a pure raw material that is what connected me to the story to the novel because really I find these kind of, you know, cute little, just like Hindi romantic songs are going on in the background. I could feel that in novel because songs we can listen, we can feel. But when something from the different art forms come and re re reunites with another form and it could uh, taste like, or, you know, it could feel like a mixture of every art form. I guess that's a true masterpiece. So thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us such a read. And this is how I truly feel after I have read the novel myself. It's an honor and a pleasure to be hearing these words from you. Indeed, I was just mesmerized. Like, I can't e exactly convey how I was feeling. I was just like on the edge. And uh, while I was reading my novel, uh like this novel my masi was sitting beside me and i was like entire day i was like masi this is going to happen now what uh i'm just reading i'm telling you in some moments this is going to happen you know what <laughs> this happened she's in paris and she's uh, going through such a situation so it kept me on the edge like now another take now another take then the turn comes then twists come so to my dear readers my dear viewers you need to be very you know attentive 
if you are not you would be just pull the book read it and when i say about the book paris being the major city of enlightenment so the way you have described the city it is just you know a true writers that philosophical eyes of a person which i could read and make it out in my head like for a person to describe a city like that they must have been you know completely in love with the city itself so what is your favorite part about you know describing the city putting out the real elements of your experience in the paper how was it you know almost uh, all the experiences are my personal experiences regarding yeah. the visit to the paris um, how monica feels when she lands in to paris those were my uh, you know feelings exactly my feelings yeah. in front of eiffel tower also when she goes for the first time those are my feelings again uh, seeing the night show or whatever i've described yeah. those were uh, all those things had happened with me and so these and jeans uh, uh, part also <laughs> no, not that. because in my house there's complete freedom on what to wear and what not to wear and there was no element uh, means you leave uh, apart uh, her husband other than that everything else has happened with me like uh, are you your question was regarding the beauty of the city so yes yeah. i love paris and um, like i'm a traveler by heart and i love going to various places and i never leave an opportunity i was Even just about to say no i was just about to say you must uh, start making some vlogs too of travel vlogs like the way you have described uh, the historic places their uh, you know the knowledge of the place then the way you express yourself you express the city with your view with your eyes and those philosophical you know it made me fall in love with the read only <laughs> so that uh, that you know true artist in you is very active throughout the book it is very active and i must say you should write some travel books for us too so that we could uh, see the world through your eyes Too. Yeah. <laughs> I used to write a few travelogs uh, for a magazine called Alive by Delhi Press earlier. I, then I don't know why I discontinued. Maybe because I write, started writing too many of my own books. Maybe. Yeah. Some things comes and falls. It will, you know, realign someday. So here we got so many comments. Let's start. wonderful discussion mm -hmm. always something to learn beautiful interaction wonderful ma'am and then comes uh it's from purnima rao Such hello purnima ji <laughs> then comes insightful talking thank you so much then comes the excellent and now we are on the edge now of course people you have to be on edge <laughs> because i can't disclose the entire story i am just giving you some glimpses i'm making ma'am to you know come out and say ki this 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 things happen so that you would know a little bit behind the scenes too <laughs> see when the hotel i didn't uh, describe the uh, means i didn't um, name the same hotel but yeah. my hotel was also something like that the one uh, that i have described in the novel so But that's like, why i am uh, very realistic in the story and uh, yeah. with that ma'am my favorite person comes over here that was the character of gurpri in accordance with gurpreet uh, the major you know the most uh, eye catching scene for me was when gurpreet asked monica to follow his instruction while they were to depart so that moment that character how you build up the character of gurpreet and then monica had that commitment to listen to the person she loved so please uh, 
Go ahead. See, I, I had to match the character of Gurpreet uh, to somebody yeah. whom Monica could really fall in love with. Okay. Uh, so Monica is a very charming, beautiful, simple, naive person. So she has to fall in love with somebody who could worship her, who could adore yeah. her, mm -hmm. and uh, who could treat her like an angel. Uh, so uh, this was the character of Gurpri. Yeah. And um, so, uh, so he's so nice, so sweet. Uh, everything about him is so good, but yet when they have to part, uh, naturally, uh, like Monica would have to listen to him, though she has a slight uh, anger against him. Mm -hmm. Why did he not elope with her or take her away from uh, so much of trouble? So she has that bit of anger. That's why there is that hesitation towards the end. Uh, but yes. Um, the person had to be somebody who respects her mm -hmm. and completely, completely loves her. So I build up the character of uh, Gurpreet accordingly. Also, with this, um, I came across two major, you know, people in life of Monica. That was a uh, Ration, her best friend, and Rupam. So we can see two different sides of friendship with these two characters. At some point, Monica was not even, uh, you know, open in expressing herself to her best of all best friends, Reshim. She had to part her ways without telling the truth. So it was, you know, intense closure of two closely connected people yet separated from each other. So this dynamic scene you created, like it was wonderful. And then on the other side, you have the character of Rupam and Monica. The two uh, people who were just involved in a cat fight without any, you know, sound reason. Then in the future, after years, they find themselves to connect with each other like none other could do. So uh, spotlight us uh, with some, you know, magic you created of two different sides, like extreme sides. But then in the end, your positive energy combines everything so, you know, so beautifully that readers have to explore themselves because I can't <laughs> give up all the things in one show. <laughs> very true, very true. I enjoyed creating those two characters. Yeah, each and every character in the story have their own prominent place. And just the way towards the end, we would discover, the readers would discover how her uh, chacha chachis, you know, her cousins were far, yet in some segment, her cousin brother could reconcile. So it just expresses a family remains family. There are some conflicts. And towards the end, when Monica has some closure with the person, she doesn't want it to even tolerate for even a second. But then everything melts. This shows how a character, their trueness, the light of a particular person, their personality, you have just outlined, highlighted that we need to be very true to ourselves and everything aligns and the karmic threads uh this this karmic threads word just um you know uh clicks in my mind in the end when chacha's situation is really on the edge and the line comes in the story that the last thread is also broken so i could connect like how karma plays its own way how karma uh, makes a, a you know a unique destiny for the people involved so ma'am do you believe in karma with this yes I, 
Yes, I do. That's why this entire novel has come into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, like uh, with the story, it is clear. Like I said, you just uh, you have given justice to the characters. You have justified the title. And what I feel is for a novelist to give the perfect ending, be it uh, any writer. be it screenplay or movies or novels when we start up with the story to give a closure to give each and every character their uh, you know their status their justice their part their role and you know one chance to get it to the closure and uh, provide some ending that is the most crucial part because uh, being a reader we may like the entire story but if the end is not you know justified we are just like okay it was there it was it could be <laughs> like we all have this thoughts uh i have it yes. many times at yes, least so i yes. have it i have also had it many times i have also had it many times and after reading a complete novel wondered what all this was about yeah so but uh, your novel what i admire like i have been stating this from the starting when any of the readers from the session would take up the book the karmic threads i would just suggest keep on reading and you will realize yourself the smoothness that it is you know connectivity is there the threads of the story they are binded very nicely and very decently each and every emotion is expressed be it a uh, hatred be it any you know greediness it is shown be it fraud be it pure love be it friendship any and every expression you can think ma'am to or you know make a like just we take a piece of cake and we eat it we enjoy each and every layer but to make those layer enjoyable and precisely like in the rainbow cake we have different seven layers wo sab ka taste barabar rakhna it's not very easy to keep the texture and softness of the cake soft it is not easy <laughs> but when i read it when i got my stomach feeded with your story i was like i am satisfied the title seemed perfect the ending okay now comes the ending like i was what is this like last chapter me i was like there should be a complete closure suddenly you lose the threads and then you combine it together with the happy log of the uh, novel and then i was like okay now finally <laughs> the karma the karmic threads they are they are released they are reunited the healing is done and whatever we see key obstacles and challenges come in our life but then we say there is a supreme power who reunites and who keeps the best of our interest in our plate so i felt it all justified it was completely a you know spiritual experience of karmic things and then it was very realistic what i felt the major words from uh, the book which i would conclude would be realistic elegant smooth and you know a true read to be given in this era because we uh, in this current scenario there are many misleading reads and merit uh, discouraging reads and there is uh, just like i feel most of the novels these days are like uh, you know fiki dal kind of so <laughs> that we are not getting that there is a you know perfect balance of each and everything because mostly people are extreme today and i just truly am blessed that i could read your work and i started with this one i'm going to read many of it and any of the author or say any of the poets if you want to you know learn here is the person you could learn from and i'm not saying it out of you know some buttering and stuff this is what truly i feel and i uh, guess my words my expression all could justify my true uh, emotions today because i have just 
read the piece of work of hers for the first time. I have listened, ma'am, many a times. But you know, you see entirely a new personality, new craft of an artist gives you new perspective. And thank you so much, ma'am. You gave me such of uh, you know, like like I always underestimate myself that I can't handle so many characters in a novel. But seeing yours, it is giving me you know this price smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would be able to. And there's a lovely comment for you from Prasanna. The prolific host is what I see here. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I was too much involved in talking because I feel when I'm getting in conversation with any of the author, it is two souls connecting, the stories connecting, the emotions connecting. And uh, I have learned from you, ma'am, this thing. Uh, I have been here with you for two years. And this this is for the first time we have, uh, you know, get in conversation, face-to-face -face life. And for all of my audience, I would just like to say, you know, a person, threads get connected. Karmic threads really get connected. For any of the reason I wouldn't have imagined today, I would be here hosting the shows. But uh, due to, I guess it was Divakar Bhaiya from the literary group. He added me in the group. Then I got connected to you uh, during our first poetry talk show that it was the meet with Praveen sir and all. And that day I came into uh, closure with ma'am. And you were just a person momentary at each and every moment. She's just guiding me. Okay, Ritvika, you can uh, modulate your voice. You can take up the uh, session of talk shows. So these karmic threads, these are true. And you get aligned. Some leave us in the uh, pathway. Because you can't uh, burden yourself with the karma too. Right? You have to lose some part of yours. And I guess Monica also in the story learned this thing. He, she, uh, she was very attached to the person. She had to let go. She had to move on. Then again, restart her life. She get attached then. And then when everything gets to an extreme point, it has to let go. Again, she figured out her life from zero in a new city with new people. And then she became self-sufficient. And she could realize what I truly want in my life and what I don't want. So, uh, ma'am, anything you would like to address to our audience with the same theme? I would uh, like, first of all, I would like to thank you for such a wonderful conversation. I really enjoyed it. I would Pleasure like to. <laughs> I would like to thank uh, the viewers who joined us and all those who will hear it later. Because uh, on our page, people keep listening to our talk shows and our poetry shows even uh, till a week or so. So uh, I thank them. And for the, the persons who wish to write a novel, I've given a lot of tips uh, in this conversation. Uh, if uh, you all follow them. I suppose you will be as successful as I am or maybe better than me. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your words. Like uh, many of our, uh, you know, viewers in the comments, they were just like, your talks are enlightening and the positive energy you radiate with your words, with your poetry and also with your novel, the end of the novels. I guess uh, it's with the experience you have, re uh, you have read variety of novels and uh as you mentioned earlier you have read uh too many of descriptions and then fast descriptions so i guess for our uh young authors it would be a precise saying that get yourself diverse to explore who you really are because once i asked you ma'am uh, I was I started writing with a novel. Then I found myself into poetry, and I don't know how I would be taking up. Then I remember you told me like you used to write novels. Then you find yourself into poetry, and everything at different stage and phases comes and goes. So this is uh, one of the major learning for me from you, in my own personal experience, and of course, karmic thread is 
uh, is and would be one of my most cheered and loved novel because if any person wants to read a novel which is you know very cozy realistic and not just a fairy tale then it is the major recommendation to each and every person out there so um it was great pleasure i could express myself i could hear you behind the stories and it was just you know golden energy i can just feel that golden energy around and i hope i could be you know the host of more of your book talk shows and till the time we are over here till the time we are able to take up the talk shows i could get in conversation with you i could provide those behind the scenes to our audience and they could know more from you they could learn from you so thank you so much ma'am for this wonderful session because it's you who could make this platform our meeting or say anything happens over here and if our audience could hear us today possible for each and every soul we are more than grateful to you ma'am it's my pleasure and it's a divine grace that i've been able to do this and create a platform where um, all our wonderful poets and writers can join and uh, render their poems in english and hindi maybe we may start in many other languages also but right now it is in english and hindi so i think it is divine grace that made me do this and um, uh, i encourage everybody to write or to have at least some hobby because having a hobby makes you a better person as what i feel thank you so much ma'am with this i would like to bind up today's shows with so much good vibration that golden aura of light and of course keeping one of the top favorite list of novel with your name and your novel ma'am and i would like to thank all of the audience the people who connected with us who listened to us who encouraged us with their comments and of course neelam ma'am i am forever grateful to you and with that i would like to say tata goodbye shabak khair to my audience so let's bid goodbye ma'am bye bye goodbye tata goodbye viewers goodbye everybody hope to see you soon